This is Pocket Tactics, and this is what kept me busy for the last couple of months. It's a small uh, tactics-like game, like Final Fantasy Tactics, Vandal Hearts, uh, or Ogre Tactics, meaning you have a couple of player characters uh, and some en enemies on a map, and the objective is to eliminate the other team. So we can move our characters. We can choose the way they fade. Let's see. So we're coming up quite close to the enemies now. They choose a path. They take elevation into account when uh, uh, choosing uh, or when to determining how far they can move. And we have this wizard here. Let's see if we're already in range of casting a spell. Let's see. Oh, no, not yet. No problem. I will just face. And now the enemies to, uh, turn. They are also slowly moving up uh, towards uh, the, the player group. I'll zoom out in a bit once it's our turn again to show what uh, what we have there. So it's our turn again, so we can zoom out. Let's have a look. So these ones are uh, coming up quite close. So let's see if we can use our archer to perhaps hit something because the higher up the archer is, the more range they have to shoot. Unfortunately, not this one yet, but perhaps next to him. We'll just face for now. Let's see if we can hit something using our knights. At least should be possible to do so next turn. And we have our mage. Now that different unit types have different uh, ranges that they can move. Just not yet, just a little closer. So let's see. Everybody needs to end that turn. So there is the first barbarian. We can hit it the next turn. It's our turn. Let's see if we can kill the barbarian. So let's move our knight into position. Attack. Notice we have a bit hit animation. The uh, hit points for the barbarian go down. Let's bring in our second knight. Attack. The hit animation. And finally, should be able to use a simple spell to finish him off. And we get the die animation. And this one is. Toast. Uh, we also have. Um, can we move you to a position that you can reach? For instance, the uh, the ghost here. Yes. So we have the an animation. Uh, the ghost uh, took damage. Now uh, we're not going to be creating this entire game. But there are a couple of things in here that I want uh, and that are really reusable, and those are the ones I want to focus on in the next session uh, of videos. So first off, there is this isometric map. So we can scroll around. You can see that it has elevation, so it has different heights. Um, we can zoom in. We can zoom out. And we can also rotate. So you can look at the map from different sides. And as you notice, the uh, sprites keep facing in the correct direction. So they take the viewpoint rotation into account. So that's some, uh, uh, what, we, uh, what I want to show. The second thing I want to show is uh, doing animations in SpriteKit, because so far we only did 
I don't think we did any real animations yet. We, of course, did uh, uh, things that moved over time, but choosing different sprites to display based on uh, state or on time is something we haven't done so far. So we'll look at how to play in these kinds of animations and also how to, uh, to create them from 3D models, although that requires some additional software, but we'll get into that. Um, and I want to show the uh, path uh, finding uh, as well as uh, showing where you can move or the range of certain actions. Um, that, because that too is something that's probably quite reusable. Uh, when you perform an action like uh, an attack, move you a bit so you can shoot again. I want to show how you can have stop happen over time. So I give the attack amount, but it doesn't immediately get hit. First, we have a projectile moving towards the ghost. Then the ghost takes uh, uh, the hit damage and hit points go down. So there's a, a sequence of stuff happening and, and we have to take into account that things can happen over time. So those are the objectives for this uh, uh, set of uh, uh, videos. So let's get started. I'm going to stop and close this project and I'm going to create a new one. Uh, this will be an iOS app. I'll call it ISO tutorial. Let's see. So important, we'll use Swift UI as the interface, Swift as the language. We don't need any storage and we will include tests. Let's find the location to place it. So this is uh, fine. Let's see, and we now have ourselves uh, a basic Swift UI app based on the standard template. Let's increase the size a bit. First thing is let's do a quick build to see if this is running as expected. Let's choose a simulator to run it on. So, for instance, this one. Let's quickly run it. Here's our basic Hello World app. Let's stop it. The last thing I want to do is go into the test navigator and disable the UI tests because we won't be using it. We will be using uh, the unit tests. And the objective for today is I want to display a flat, isometrically projected map, sort of a plane. And we will do that based on uh, some assets and we will use these isometric tiles template. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. And in particularly we will be using this one and this tile to build up uh, a flat map, sort of like this, for instance, this uh, part of the map they show here. And uh, the, uh, the focus for today is how do we get that done? So I created some quickly something to show it. So we're talking about isometric maps. And the challenge here is that we need to convert from world space to screen space. And our world space, think of it like this. We have a map that's for instance, tiles uh, that we want to show. We have four tiles here in Cartesian coordinates, we have some tiles and we want them sort of shown uh, like this. Uh, in particular, and this is slightly more complex than what we did before, because typically we had games that looked from the top down, meaning that it's almost directly convertible from uh, uh, the, the maps in these types of coordinates towards how they look on the screen. It's a bit more complicated here because if we, for instance, have uh, a tile zero zero in world coordinates and we move one right to one zero, we actually move both in the green space X direction as well in the screen space y, y direction. So our screen coordinate changes not just in the X coordinate when the world coordinate changes in X, but both X and Y. So we could call that our X offset. That's a factor 
meaning for each time we move, uh, change x by one, we uh, change two coordinates, x and y in screen uh, space by 16 and eight in this case. How do we get to 16 and eight? Well, it, this depends on the tiles you have. And it's easiest to determine this in uh, a uh, paint package. So I'm using Pixelmator here, but you can basically use anything. So this is our tile zoomed in. And let's create a second one. And then we need to look at how much do we need to move it to show it uh, in the correct way. Well, first off, what I'm going to do is so we move uh, this one until they line up correctly. And we see that we have delta x of a delta y of minus 8. Um, this will be different in, uh, in Sprite Kit because in Sprite Kit, uh, the uh, y axis in screen coordinates comes, goes from bottom to top. In Pixelmator, it goes from top to bottom. So we actually need an offset of 8 instead of minus 8, the, the inverse of, uh, uh, of this one. So that's where those numbers come from. And so they are dependent on the tile you choose. Um, but, and they are easiest to find uh, in, uh, in, in an R package. Typically, the X uh, uh, displacement is half of the tile size, but it can be different if the projection is slightly different. So that's the, that is moving uh, uh, on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have something different. However, if we go uh, increase our y position, we actually decrease our x position in uh, screen coordinates. And these vectors can be added to find new coordinates. So if I go to coordinates 1, 1, I can actually uh, add first going to this one and then going to this one and using those offsets together. And then we can also see that in this case, uh, the X displacements cancel each other out and we only have an I, Y displacement uh, in screen space. This, and this also scale, scales linearly, so we can do this for uh, tiles that are further away. Also, this works for tiles if we have uh, negative coordinates, so they just go the other way around. Basically, what we're doing is we have a map that's sort of uh, an X and Y coordinates, and we try and uh, convert it to X and Y coordinates in screen space. Uh, confusion could arrive because uh, we bo they both are called X and Y coordinates and we need to always be sure. Are we talking about world coordinates or coordinates uh, on a map? Or are we talking about screen coordinates? And we will uh, look at ways of making sure that we don't make too many mistakes there in the future. Uh, our general function will be that we have uh, uh, something that passes in an X and a Y coordinate and returns uh, a, a new factor that is the x coordinate uh, uh, or uh, the x amount uh, multiplied by the uh, x offset factor uh, plus the y uh, uh, passed in times the y factor uh, y offset factor and let, let's get started so we have we're back in Xcode. Let's go to our tests. And we don't need all this stuff. Let's create a new test. And we will first test this case. We're increasing X by one set x and y in screen space by let's see 16 and 8. So let's uh, have, have a, uh, a start coordinate or an input coordinate in world space. 
and this will be um, it's called the factor from uh, one zero that's the one here and let's have an expected coordinate in screen space and this will be a factor in 16 and 8 Oh, is, but complaining about we don't know what a factor is. So let's create something very simple that uh, satisfies at least this uh, requirement. A factor will be a tuple of int and int. Um, and then let's uh, assert that if we have our coordinate in world space and we have some function that convert world to screen returns our expected coordinate in screen space um, of course we don't have this function yet so let's define it let's define a convert world to screen function that takes in and returns a new factor. And for now, let's return zero, zero, so at least this compiles. Um, okay, so we can't use this because uh, the type alias doesn't conform to equatable. Uh, let's do then uh, let's create a structure that takes an x and a y coordinate and that means that we need to do we need a bit more boilerplate code integers and then we can say our vector confirms the equatable. And let's run the test. So now at least it builds. And the test fails because we're returning 00, zero instead of 16.8. Now, of course, we can hard code this result in test passes cool however of course the next test then will fail but that doesn't mean so it doesn't matter so let's see if we increasing y by one of a set x and y in screen space by minus ooh, that's well, something like this and eight so again we need a sort of similar code so this one will be zero this one will be minus one and the result that we expect is minus 16 and eight let's run the test these of course fail because we have hard coded a different answer, so we need to start doing some thinking here. So let's say we have our um, let's use what we have here. So we have our x offset 168. So let's say we have a factor of x offset that is 16 by 8. And let's say we have a y offset that is a factor that is minus 16 and 8 and let's return the x offset times let's use this formula Oh, I'm sorry, this formula. 
and our wall space position dot y times the y offset. And this fails because unfortunately the factor doesn't know how to do additions and multiplication. So let's implement those quickly. So let's have a static function um, plus that takes a left hand side vector and a right hand side vector and uh, returns a new vector. So this will return vector x left hand side plus x right hand side is x plus left hand side is y. Right hand side is y. So this now satisfies elite plus and we need so, uh, something similar to do multiplication. Um, let's see, we're multiplying by um, scalar. So our left side here actually is a scalar. This will be an integer. Am I now allowed to? This will be a vector. Okay, let's see. This should now compile. And this should now at least uh, satisfy the test. Let's see our test failed. Uh, oh. I thought we were going to one instead of minus one. Okay, so the test now succeeds. We can do a few, let's let's do a few more, and then we should have enough confidence that is convert to world to screens based function works. And then let's clean uh, clean up this code a bit. So let's test um, linear behavior of convert to world space. So we'll have a couple of uh, world coordinates. Oh, let's see, so let's do uh, minus, minus one, two. Uh, two, two. Let's do this one, two minus one. And let's do some in the bottom here. So let's see, minus one and zero. Uh, zero minus one. And minus one minus one. So these are the input coordinates. Then we have some expected uh, screen space coordinates uh, that would be minus forty eight eight zero and thirty two forty eight eight And minus one zero would be minus sixteen minus eight uh, sixteen and minus eight and zero and minus sixteen. So let's look through each and every and uh, all, all of these or. And uh, convert to uh, well, uh, convert all to the screen for our world coordinates. 
i returns are expected green space coordinates. Right. So this test should pass. Cool. I think we have now enough to do at least to show something on the screen. So let's first create a new file to store all this conversion stuff in. So it's also part of the other project. I'll call this an ISO converter Swift. And in this I will put all this stuff. I'll run the tests again just to make sure that uh, nothing broke. Um, and now let's look at our content view. So we have uh, now only this hell world. What we need is a sprite view. So we need to import sprite kit and we will create a sprite view. And this requires a scene. So we'll come to that in a bit. I will say ignore save area. So we use the entire screen. So we need a scene, um, meaning that we need a new Swift file. We need a game scene. So we call this one game scene. We will need Sprite Kit. We'll create a final class game scene that inherits from SK scene. And now we can go to our content view and create a new game scene here. This won't show anything yet because, of course, this game scene is completely empty. So let's see what we can start uh, showing in the screen. Well, first, let's make sure that we have our uh, asset to use. So uh, let's see, we have a uh, block here from, uh, from, from the style sheet. Quickly copy it. Export it as a PNG and let's call it for uh, PNG. Can be on desktop, no problem. And let's go into uh, our assets folder, place it in, and now it's here as a for tile. We need to make sure that we use the same name uh, when we show it, but this is okay for now um, so let's try and show something on the screen so what we need is um, we will need an override function for it did move to I always forget what exactly what it was called like there's something that says uh, a move to did move to view right and this requires some setup. So we need to set our size correctly, and this will be our view dot frame dot size. We need to set the scale mode to aspect fill. So we use the entire uh, viewport, and we'll worry about cameras later. So I'll keep it really simple. So we'll go from Y in uh, 0 to, uh, I don't know, 4, and for x in 0 to 4, and now we need, want to show something. So we should have a sprite, an SK sprite node for an image named, and now we need to quickly go back and see what we called it, floor, dot, floor underscore tile. And we need to set the tile to the correct position. So let's create a temporary variable called screen position. And this will be use our uh, converter. And this will uh, take in a vector for x and y and return the new one that's the screen position. So we do our sprite.position and this one will be equal to a new CG point, screen position of X, 
green position plus y. And then we will add a child as part. So let's run this. Well, at least something is showing, but it's on the bottom half of the screen. And that's because uh, we uh, haven't moved uh, our, our camera. Or otherwise, in other words, um, I would like, basically we're looking at uh, a different point than where I would like to look into the center of this thing. So what we'll do is we'll, and we'll use a camera. That's the easiest solution to do so. So we'll create a camera node. And we'll have a camera screen position. And this two uses this function, but we will put it on the uh, mid middle of our map. So let's see, that would be two, two, I guess, something right there. And then we have a camera node of position, and that one is a TG point. Camera screen position dot x, camera screen position dot y. We add the camera node. And we'll say self dot camera equals this camera node. So at least now we should see our map centered. But it's not yet looking very uh, okay. And that's because um, it's not drawn the, co the correct way. Um, it's because tiles are overlaying each other. Basically, what we want to do is we want to make sure that tiles that are sort of closer to the camera are uh, uh, drawn on top of the ones that are further behind. Um, for now, the simplest solution to solve this is to use the C, uh, to set a C position and simply set it to negative of the screen position dot y. And this requires a double, so it cost, meaning that higher up stuff, which is typically further away, uh, will be uh, dr drawn further in the back, and the other ones are drawn on top. So, uh, so this, this is a very naive uh, painless algorithm. And at least now we have our our map. And for now, we can make the map a bit bigger. Let's see. I'm using these values because it means that I don't need to uh, do anything with the camera. The midpoint stays the same, but we can fix that at a later time. We have our map. And I think this is enough uh, for now. Next time, we will look at introducing elevation. That makes it all uh, uh, quite a bit more complicated, but that's it's also the reason why you would even consider using isometric projection. You want this type of projection if you want to introduce a third dimension. So let's say we have a C coordinate going up and we want to show higher parts and lower parts. Those are quite important in these types of games. So that is something we're going to add next time. But this should be enough for now. So thank you for watching and have a good day.